That's great. Thanks, Justin. I've shared my screen. So on my end, it's, do you guys see the PowerPoint? Someone can leave a comment. It says co-management tenant attach. I can see it now, just gone live. There's a slight delay, but yeah, I can see it now. Okay, perfect. Yeah, I don't know why it's not showing me send live, but I'll try to work that on the back end while you guys go. As long as people are seeing it, I think we are good. We're cool. I'm I'm saying prayers under my breath. So we're good. We're good. Um okay, so I just want to say thank you, Justin, for inviting me and Paul onto your user group to talk about co-management and tenant attach. Uh, we're really excited to to get an hour of people's time just to run through some concepts and do some deep dives in areas that we think maybe need a um, little bit more attention. So maybe people can appreciate there's a there's a lot to some of these technologies like co-management and tenant attached. So if we do speak fast or skip over some stuff, it's just because of time constraints. And so we ask you that if you do use the Q and A um, and ask any questions in there, we'll do our best to keep an eye on it. And I'd probably ask my my co-presenters and colleagues that if, if a question pops up and one of us is presenting, if if you feel that it's suitable to call it out, um, then please do so. And we'll do our best to answer it <coughs> as long as it's not too off script. <laughs> so um, Paul and I have an hour to talk about co-management and tenant attached. And what we've decided to do is split that into two sessions. So I'm going to spend maybe the first 30 minutes walking through some of the prerequisites and concepts of co-management, what co-management is. We'll we'll look in a bit more depth at Enrom into Intune for our config manager clients. And we'll talk about workloads and what workloads are and how we can move those workloads to Intune. And at the end of that first part of the session, I'll look into some of the things that we should maybe be considering um, as we move workloads across to Intune from Config Manager. And uh, Paul, if you wanted to just mention briefly what you'll be yeah. discussing. Hello, everyone. Um, OK, so as Ben mentioned, we've got two sections on this. So I'll be talking about how you can tenant attach, what that is. Um, be sort of overviewing a few prereqs, not going too deep into those uh, because I want to look at uh, demoing this stuff for you. So uh, if the demo gods are, are kind today, we'll be looking at all the different feature set within Tenant Attach and how you can get information from that and how you can push things out. Awesome, thanks Paul. So um, let's, let's get started, so the clock is ticking. Um, my name is Ben Whitmore, I'm a technical architect and I live in the UK. Um, I've been working in IT for 20 years. Um, my job role requires me to touch a few different technologies. Um, as of late, my main focus really is um, Endpoint. So I work quite deeply with Config Manager, uh, Windows 10 and Intune. And if you want to catch any of the stuff I'm doing, I normally blog about it at whiteben.com. So feel free to head over there and see what I'm up to. So in this, in this first 30 minutes, I'm going to be talking about co-management. Um, as Justin said, on on the last um, BS mug, that was um, something that was asked for to go over co-management. So hopefully I'll do that justice. Um, we're going to be looking at what is co-management, um, perhaps what co-management isn't in this session. We're going to go over the, the pathways to reach a co-managed state and focusing on one of those pathways in particular. I'm going to very quickly go over prerequisites because that can get quite deep. Um, I'll probably just tell you to go to the Microsoft documentation, but we'll go over it very briefly. Um, I'm going to spend a bit more time um, looking at the enrollment process into Intune, um, because that's something that we see come up quite a lot. There's a lot of questions around that. And then also I'll spend a bit of time looking at what workloads are and how we can move workloads from Config Manager to Intune. And then we'll wrap up the session, just looking at maybe some of the considerations you should have as you move those workloads from Config Man to Intune. So what is co-management? So for me, co-management is a technology that harmonizes workload um, and policy that are delivered from both Intune and Config Manager. Um, so it ensures there's no conflicts um, in those policies delivered, being delivered by both of those management platforms. So for me, it's a way to bridge on-prem with cloud and it allows a phased approach to moving 
um, to the modern way of doing things. And I guess before code management was a thing, um, for me, it was always a battle when trying to do stuff in Intune um, with existing Config Manager clients. So you'd often get conflicting policies if you're trying to do stuff in Intune and Config Man, and you know, it, it got a bit messy. So code management really addresses that. And what it does, it ensures that policy and configuration for specific workloads come from only one authoritative source. So that would be either Intune or Config Manager, but not both. <clears throat> and the immediate value that co-management brings, I guess, is when those devices, those existing Config Manager devices become enrolled into Intune. So straight away, we, we get features available to those Config Man clients like device wipe, factory reset, application deployments, auditing and security and client health. So these are the things that we may be used to seeing for those um, Azure AD join devices that are in tune managed, but we can bring that feature set to our on-prem domain joined config manager clients today too. And this, the standout easy win for me for co-management is that we can get compliance-based conditional access for our on-prem clients. So if you're domain joined Windows 10 machines, a hybrid Azure AD joined, so they're Azure AD registered, you can do conditional base, you can do conditional access today, um, but co-management enables you to do compliance-based conditional access, um, which is a really, really good feature in my opinion. And you know, all else aside, if I wasn't moving workloads to Intune with co-management, I would enable co-management just to get this feature. So let's let's spend a little bit of time looking at this picture is it, it's one that comes up a lot when people talk about code management but i don't think we should skip over I, i'm just going to spend a bit of time for those who maybe don't know that um, what code management is so what we're looking at here are two management platforms we have intune at the top in blue and we have config manager at the bottom in green um, and at this point it's probably good to say what code management isn't i guess so code management is not hybrid. So you may have heard of the term hybrid before used when people have spoken about Config Man and Intune. This isn't hybrid. So hybrid is, is a feature that was deprecated in around September 2019. And, and the hybrid approach meant that you, you created a policy in Config Man, that policy was synced to Intune, and then from Intune the policy was applied to your devices. Co-management isn't that. And Co-management is also not coexistence. So coexistence is where you have a third party MDM on the same Windows 10 device as your, as your Config Manager agent um, that is not in tune. And if that happens, that's coexistence. And if you have coexistence, you probably already know that your Config Man goes into almost read-only mode and has basic functionality like hardware inventory, software metering and reporting. So this is not coexistence either. So let's let's go into what co-management is then. So we have our Intune authority up here in the cloud, which is blue, and our mobile devices today are managed by Intune and our policies get delivered to those devices. And we can see here, we have our Windows 10 device that has an MDM, MDM agent installed. And we can use Intune to deliver policies to our Windows 10 device using the MDM agent. And at the bottom, we have our config man instance in green, and we can deliver the same policies to our Windows 10 client as well, because we have the config manager agent installed, as well as being able to deliver those policies to legacy clients. But the one thing we get with Windows 10, because we have both management agents installed, we can get to choose which authoritative source those policies come from. So if I'm going to single out one of these, like Windows Update for Business Policies, with co-management, I can ensure that Windows Update policies will only come from one source to my Windows 10 device. So that is co-management in a nutshell. And there are two ways to get to a co-managed state. One of them we're going to focus on today. The first one is if you have existing Config Man clients. So if you do, 
the Windows 10 devices are already managed by Configuration Manager. Um, but we need to get those devices registered in Azure AD or do a hybrid Azure AD join. And we also need to enroll them into Intune. The second pathway, which we're not going to look into too much detail on today, is for existing internet enrolled clients. So those are Windows 10 devices that are Azure AD joined and managed by Intune. And you want to bring those devices into a co-managed state. So you're probably going to need something like a cloud management gateway or CMG, um, unless you've got a VPN, so that those internet um, clients can communicate with your management points um, on-prem. We're not going to focus on that pathway too much today. We're going to look at pathway one, which is for existing config manager clients. So if we do that, we have some prereqs, and I'm going to skip over these really fast. And you have to forgive me for talking fast because we've got a lot to put into this session. So we're going to need some licenses, unfortunately, guys and girls. You're going to need an Azure AD premium license, uh, which comes with M365 or EMS. Um, you're also going to need an Intune license for each of your clients. You're going to need Windows 10 devices. So those Windows 10 devices need to be Azure AD registered. And we'll go over that in a bit more detail as well. Uh, the Windows 10 devices also have to be 1709 or higher. Um, and I'll just mention at this point as well, there are some other prereqs for Windows 10 devices. If you look at the docs for hybrid Azure AD join and Intune enrollment, you'll notice that those Windows 10 devices need to reach out to specific endpoints. So if you're using a proxy server in your environment today and you have an explicit firewall, and your users access the internet by the proxy server, your devices will need in the device context to reach out to some URLs. So I do see that people trip up on that from time to time. So definitely make sure you read the docs when you're looking at prereqs. You're going to need specific permissions to set this up. So you'll need the global admin permission in Intune to create, um, to onboard your tenant. You're going to need to be an enterprise administrator for your ADDS if you're going to run the AD Connect wizard to enable hybrid Azure AD join. And you're going to need to be a config manager administrator with all roles and scope. You need config man to do this. Um, surprise, surprise. And um, just for time's sake, I'm not going to dwell on these points too much, but code management was lit up in 1710 config man. And you can see with each new version, we got some new features with code management. So I would say from 1906 was was probably the, the biggest leap um, for me. Um, but this this just highlights, I guess, that keep config man updated because <laughs> you, you get new features. So we're going to just skip right past that. And Microsoft Intune, you need Intune. And with Microsoft Intune, you need to make sure that your MDM user scope is set to all or some. So if you're going to restrict your MDM user scope just to a group of users, you need to make sure that that group uh, is going to be for the users who are going to do any kind of enrollment into Intune. Right, we'll slow down a bit now because I've got all the PowerPoint slides out of the way. Let's, let's go into a bit more detail on this enrollment process. So for existing domain join machines that need to enroll into Intune to get into this co-managed state, there's two things we need to do. We need to make sure those devices are first hybrid Azure AD joined or Azure AD registered. And we have to do that before our clients can enroll into Intune. And it's my recommendation that we set up hybrid Azure AD um, within the Azure AD Connect wizard. Um, you've probably done this already, but it's just worth pointing out that it's just much easier to do with AD Connect than it is to try and do it manually. Um, so what that wizard does is it creates a service connection point in your Active Directory domain services. And your Windows 10 clients will look at that service connection point or SCP, and they will automatically register in your Azure AD tenant. So you can see on the screen there. Just, uh, zoom in a bit. So it populates the SCP with your tenant information. Your Windows 10 clients will join. Azure AD. And the way you can test if they've joined successfully is to use dsregcmd slash status on your clients. Just going up here. 
So that's the command you need to run on your endpoints to know whether they've joined or so registered successfully with Azure AD. And you can also look in the event viewer for event 306. So event 306 under the user device registration event log will show you if those devices have registered in Azure AD. And I'll just show you what that looks like. If I go to Azure AD, look at all my devices. You can see here, if I, if I single out one device, so if I look at this BB-Win10-4, which is what we're going to be using today in the labs, this client right here, we can see that it's hybrid Azure AD joined. That's all I needed to do. Windows 10 devices will automatically hybrid Azure AD join if you have the SCP set up. So that's pretty straightforward. Jumping on to enrollment, so we're going to dive into the labs now, move away from PowerPoint. Um, we're just going to go over the process. We hope the demo gods are kind to us because we're going to enroll one of our clients into Intune, and it is going to be as simple as adding a client to a collection. So let's go for that. Let's just get my lab up. So, okay, Paul, do we need to zoom in on that? How does that look on your screen, that lab? Um, I've got a small screen, so it looks a little small <laughs> to me, but yeah, that's better. I'll, that, that's I'll zoom it where I can. Yeah, 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 yeah. that's cool. <laughs> okay, so for code management, we need we need to go into our config man console. Uh, we need to go to the administration blade and cloud services, and we have code management as an option there within cloud services. If you haven't set co-management up, you won't see anything in there, but I have. So I'm just going to look at the properties of my existing connection. Any second. This does take a little bit of time to come up, doesn't it? There we go. So as my very cleverly placed PowerPoint background shows, when you go into the properties of your co-management settings, there's three different tabs. So the first tab has already been completed for me. So when you go through the co-management wizard, first of all, you need to onboard your tenants to Intune. So this is where you're going to need to put your global admin credentials to make that initial connection to do the configuration for that service. Um, the next tab along is tenant attach only. So I'll leave that to Paul to talk about tenant attach. Um, but what's maybe what's quite confusing for some is that tenant attach is within co-management, but it's not co-management per se. So <laughs> that can that certainly tripped me up that terminology before. But here's where I want to focus. I want to go to the enablement tab because I want to enroll my client into Intune. Okay, so you have different options here. You can choose whether to have pilot enrollment which means you're only going to enroll some clients into Intune based on them being a member of a collection. I can say none, which means I don't want any of my clients to enroll into Intune. I can say I want all of my clients that meet the prereqs, so the Windows 10 clients, to enroll into Intune. Um, for most people, I'd suggest that Pilot is the best one to go for. And so that's limited based on the membership of this collection. So I'm just going to pop over to that collection now. Very conscious of time. OK, so here's my Intune auto enrollment collection. So I'm going to place my client into this collection and we're going to watch it auto enroll. If I just get that client on the screen. There she is. So this is my client. She's not currently enrolled into Intune. If I open up the co-management handler dot log file on the client, this is where all the good stuff happens. So in here you'll see whether the device enrolls into, into Intune or not. Um, you'll see any of the workload moves happening in, in this log file. So this is certainly one to add to your favorites. So if I look in this log file here now, we can see that the device is not NDM enrolled yet. And if that's come up on your screen, OK. OK, so the device is not NDM enrolled yet. So if I pop back to CM and add my client here, There we go. 
So I've got four clients in that collection now. So I'm going to pop over to my Windows 10 client and just force a policy refresh. Okay. And we'll just keep an eye on the, the log file. So this is going to come through really quickly if the gods are good to us. Now, it did happen very quickly. And if you can see that NGM enrollment succeeded. So what it does when config manager handles the enrollment into Intune, it uses the Azure Active Directory device token. So it's a really fast registration. It's not having to wait for an Intune license user to log on for that enrollment to take place. So if you are if you are using group policy to do Intune enrollment, which I would advise against the if it's a domain joining machine and using group policy, you have to use the user token to enroll it, which means an Intune license user has to log on to that Windows 10 device before the enrollment takes place, and that can take time for that to happen. So if, if you get any takeaway from this session, set up the pilot collection for Intune enrollment in co-management and add your clients there, and it's such an easy enrollment process. So it shows me that I've enrolled in the log file. If I head over to my tenant, I'll go to device management. So, zoom it. So there's my Windows 10 client. It appears here already because I've got tenant attached enabled, so that maybe confuses things, but you can see it's managed by config manager. It doesn't say that it's co-managed. So if I refresh this blade, A second or two. There we go. So this is this is actually quite good that this has happened. So you can probably see that I've got two devices. How about that demo gods? So there's my BB hyphen win ten hyphen four device. It's now showing as co-managed, which is cool. But I've got a duplicate device in there. That's because I've got tenant attached enabled and I'm uploading all my Windows 10 devices using tenant attach. This is something you'll see if you're using tenant attach and co management, but don't be alarmed. Um, there's some back end logic that happens um, in Intune that does merge those two devices down into one device. It just takes time. So don't be too alarmed if you see that, um, but it can upset reporting. Um, and you can see our BB Win 10 4 device has enrolled into Intune. And this is quite interesting. It shows you that Barry has enrolled this device. He, because Barry, <laughs> but the way this works is the first hybrid synced identity to log into that device becomes the person who's enrolled it. Because when Config Manager does the enrollment, um, it sets the enrollment user as none. So it doesn't assign a user, but then the first hybrid sync identity to log into the device does become the user who enrolls it. So that's just something else to look out for. So if your admin team are imaging PCs and then they're logging into the workstation before they give it to the client, then you may see that the enrolled by user UPN does become that admin user, which isn't great. So it's certainly something to keep an eye on. I'm not going to have a look at why those logs are appearing out. Just haven't got time to do that. Uh, but cool. Quite straightforward to do an engine enrollment. Let me just show you on the client what's happened there. So if we look in task scheduler. With me. No, I don't have time, Paul. Am I up against it? Um, hmm. When do we start? About quarter past, so uh, 10 minutes. Yes, yeah, if you guys run a little late, not, not a big deal either. So I've got a lot of fit in, so I'm just <laughs> talking really quickly. So I just wanted to pop into, into the, 
because I said I was going to deep dive the enrollment process a little bit. So if I if I go back into this client that's enrolled into Intune, I can see I've got this new task and task scheduler. So you'd expect to see this when your device enrolls into Intune. So Config Man has done all this automatically, again, just by me adding that device to the collection. And if we pop over to the registry, and look for one of these. So what was the last one? There you go. It's the one with the most information in it. <laughs> so this, this GUID is never the same. You can see here that I'm under HG Local Machines Software Microsoft Enrollments, and the key here I'm looking for shows me that the device is enrolled into Intune. Um, Config Manager done the enrollment, so you can see the key there. And the UPN of the user who done the enrollment was foo user. <clears throat> so essentially they're saying that no user enrolled it. Config Manager done it with the device token. Um, so that's just a registry key to look out for to tell you that Config Man done that enrollment into Intune. Okay, we saw in the log file that the Azure Active Directory device credentials were used to enroll that device into Intune. And we just showed you the registry keys that you would see on your endpoint when Config Man does that enrollment. And just one other thing to point out, um, some of you may have questioned, why does the management name appear as a long GUID? Well, if Config Man um, handles the enrollment, then the management name will be the device ID from Azure AD that gets populated into the management name. So that's why that happens. OK, very quickly, we're going to move into workloads. Um, just pause and have five minutes left to do a session if I'm not careful. <laughs> uh, well, we have seven workloads today. Compliance policies, Windows updates policies, resource access policies, endpoint protection policies, device configuration policies, and we have two app workloads. We have Office Fit to run apps and client apps. Okay, so a workload is, is basically given a value or a capability. So if I choose, if I go back to CM and just go back to my co-management properties. I just want to show you where we where we define the workloads, the collections for those workloads. So on the workloads tab, I generally suggest that you set these to pilot in tune. So if we look at compliance policies, if I had that starter set to config man, it means all of my clients are going to get the compliance policies from config man. If I set it to Intune, it means all of my clients will get their compliance policies from Intune, but I'm quite happy with this halfway house. So with pilot Intune, it means that when I click on the staging tab, any device within this collection will have its compliance policies come from Intune. So I can be quite selective on which workloads I move across to Intune for which clients. Okay. Each one of those workloads has a numerical value. So if we just go back to the PowerPoint. So when I move a workload across to Intune, you'll see a few things happen on the client. This is where we need to look back into the code management handler.log file. So if I was to move the compliance policies for one particular client and only compliance policies, I would see in the log file that my capabilities value would change. And there's a calculation that's done on those values to determine that capability number. Um, I, it's easier to just look, just add the values together. It isn't quite how it's worked out. Um, but for the sake of argument, it's just easier to append them all together. So you always add one to the values. So compliance had a value of two. And if I add two to one, I get a capabilities value of three. And we can watch our log file in action if we move the workload across for client. I'll just get the CM back up. Go to my collections. So let me add my client to this compliance policies collection. Just 
update that. Let's make sure we definitely peaks. Who else presses refresh a lot in the config mode console? Yeah, so my client is now in that collection. If I pop over to my client and do a policy refresh. So it's a machine policy refresh. I'll open the log file. And if I zoom in here, it happens pretty quickly. <coughs> I don't know what that red error is in my log file. I'll have to have a look. But you can see here that code, the code management handle log, log, log file shows you the capability change. So the current capability is one, but it expects it to be three it's because I've added the client's policy group. And then it does a merge on the endpoint. So merged value for code management settings capabilities is three. And then if I restart the config manager control panel applet, you'll see those capabilities number change there as well. It's on the very front screen on the general tab, capabilities is changes to three as well. And if you check on the endpoint admin center for that particular client, You'll also see the capabilities there. Oh, hey, look, it's already merged down those two devices already. Do you remember we had two devices earlier here? My client, they've already merged down. But if I pop in here at the bottom of the screen, I can see the Intune Manage workloads. So it shows me that I've moved compliance policies across to Intune for that workload. So that means any compliance policies I'd sent to the client from Config Man and they're ignored. And any compliance policies that are targeted to my clients from Intune is now taking priority. So this screen just shows what I just showed you. There. So as I mentioned today, we had seven workloads available to us in code management. I think there are more coming um, because the capabilities maximum value used to be 255. And the new maximum capability value is 4095. So I've got a feeling the team are working on something, but you know, this is just hearsay. Um, I can't think of another reason why that value would increase, but I think there's something coming. So watch the space. Anyway, I've, I've well overrun. Sorry, Paul. <laughs> I'm just going to give the guys some considerations for when they're moving workloads across to um, Intune. So this has caught me out a lot. So consider any legacy settings that may impact the successful workload or move. So we're only blocking um, config manager policies with code management. We move the workload to Intune. So are you setting settings from other places? Do you have any logon strips or group policies that are setting stuff that, that may have an impact on that workload move? You may be well doing that. So it's worth keeping an eye out for. Um, and another thing to check as well is that once you move a workload for a client, just be mindful of any other settings you've got an Intune that that client may suddenly be in scope for. It's certainly one that I've seen catch people out as well. Always test in a pilot group would be my suggestion. And consider implementing a CMG. So a lot of us saw during COVID that we wanted to use code management and we wanted to flip workloads across to Intune really quickly. But some of our devices didn't have a VPN. We didn't have um, site of our management point so we couldn't do it. Whereas if you have a CMG in place and your clients are out there on the internet and something happens again, you can move the workload and that workload communication then happens for the internet based client. And I'm going to leave, leave these on the side. I'm not going to dive into these at all. <clears throat> just I believe Justin's added these slides to the GitHub, which you'll make available at the end. And um, these are some real life gotchas that I've come across where I've moved workloads across. So this is specifically for Windows updates where I've had legacy settings on prem that have prevented those workloads from moving successfully. So definitely check those out guys because I think you maybe bump into one or two of those. So that was it for me from code management. I hope that was um, useful. It was a, a very whistle stop tour. Um, we tried to generalize some of the points and what co management was, tried to do a bit of a deep dive. Um, but if anybody's got any questions, please follow me up on Twitter. If there's anything come through in the chat, guys, can you let me know.
If not, I'm going to hand over to my good friend Paul to talk about Tenant Attach.